is Brittany, and I post three true crime cases in an ASMR style each week on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 6 p.m. So if you enjoy whispered true crime, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you. I love you. You mean the world to me. So, I have a candy um, tonight because this is my, what video am I on? Second video I'm recording and I can feel my throat getting dry. So, these are little heart gobstoppers, which are my favorite candy literally ever, 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 ever. I wait for them to come out every single year. I will even admit that I bought them like off season and paid way more for them before. Um, so I'm going to be sucking on this during the video. Also, I am going to be filming a Q&A soon, so if you have any questions for me, please leave them down below, and I will include them in my video. Okay, let's get started on today's case. It was October 28th, 1981, in Newburgh Heights, Ohio. It was almost Halloween. Everybody was excited for trick-or-treating um, and just getting ready for the holidays. That afternoon, there were three young boys that had decided to go play in a ravine, which they had done several times before. He was good at school. He was 
was good around the neighborhood. He was just a good boy. Now, Kurt did like to party, you know, just like any other 17-year-old boy in the early 80s. Um, he would often go to parties on the weekend with his friends where he would drink a little bit and occasionally smoke some marijuana. And that seemed to be what the plan was for the night of October 23rd. It was a Friday and Kurt had actually skipped school that day, which is his parents did not know, and he ended up going to a liquor store where he was able to talk a man into buying him alcohol. Um, the man buys him a fifth of a hundred and ninety proof Everclear oi um, and he ended up sort of starting the party early and had been nursing the bottle all afternoon he ends up meeting up with a friend of his named Samuel Carroll and the two of them decided to go to a house party. So Dorothy stayed up really late that night um, waiting for Kurt because it was pretty unlike him to not come home. Um, the only time that he would not come home was when always home by 11 p.m. at the absolute latest. So Dorothy, like, eventually falls asleep, and when she wakes up on Saturday morning, Kurt still isn't home. She starts calling his friends to see if she was doing that, Ken actually went out and started looking for him around the neighborhood. So Saturday, they just sort of spend the day looking for, Ken, for Kurt, um, calling his friends, all of that stuff. But by Sunday, when they were still not able to find him, they go to the police department and register him as a missing person. Dorothy remembers that by this point they had searched everywhere. He was known to frequent. They had also searched like the ravines, the schoolyards. She even was looking in and she was not able to find Kurt anywhere. By Sunday afternoon, so not long after Kurt was reported as missing, the police found out that Kurt had attended a party the night before, which was held at a duplex only to from the Sova household. So the party was thrown by a girl named Susan and Dorothy, who is a badass in this case, decides to go and talk to her. So she shows up at this house and there's a girl there, but it was not 
Susan. So Dorothy kind of, you know, tells this girl what's going on and asks if she will give Susan her number and have her call her when she gets home. The girl agreed and she did give Susan Dorothy's number because Susan ended up calling Dorothy, but she tells her that she didn't have a party, she doesn't know Kurt, she has no clue what Dorothy is talking about, but then Dorothy is able to speak to a pizza delivery man who actually delivered pizza to the party. So, he says that he delivered to this party and there was a party, definitely, and there was about 12 people there when he was there. So, Dorothy, like, reaches out to Susan again and she's like, hey, this is what the pizza guy said and sort of, like, pressures her, tells her that Kurt is missing, and Susan finally admits that Kurt had been at her house, and that he had been drinking very heavily. He ended up sick and just kept drinking, even though he was sick. She also said that most at the party were way older than Kurt and that Kurt didn't know any of them very well. So, Dorothy is doing everything trying to find her son. She's literally leading this investigation um, which I would do the same for my kids. Um, and she ends up reaching out to Samuel, which is who he went to the party with. I have another candy. So, Dorothy had this to say about the conversation that she had had. Samuel. Quote, the fellow that Kurt went to the party with told me that Kurt had become ill. They took him outside for some air and because it was a chilly night, he ended up going upstairs to get Kurt's jacket and he left Kurt leaning on he went up to get his jacket and came back down, and Kurt was gone. Now, Samuel says that he looked around for Kurt outside and inside, and after a while, just assumed he had left and, like, gotten a ride home, and he didn't think much of it. to say though. scratches. He wasn't injured. He didn't have a heart attack. 
who's still doing everything tries to like piece together what happened after that party there was a friend of Kurt's named David who came forward saying that he had actually seen Kurt three days after the party um, he claims that Kurt and another boy were walking down a street only about a mile from the sofa house he says he pulled over um, and offered Kurt a ride but like at the same time a van pulled up and he says that Kurt said Franco and then both the boys got in the van David said that he didn't know Kurt was missing at that point um, so he didn't do anything he just like brushed it off and left the same saw Kurt. There was a man sort of wandering around that area and he's standing outside a record store and he points to a missing person's poster um, of Kurt and he tells the manager that he might as well take the poster because Kurt was going to be found dead in two days. And he was found dead two days later. The next day, so the day before Kurt was found, the man comes back and leaves flowers and a card. And the note said, roses are red, the sky is blue. They found him dead, and they'll find you, too. The record store contacted the police, and they did find him and speak to him, but they said that he was mentally unstable, and that he hadn't committed a crime, and, you know, let him go, that he was just, you know, a homeless man acting a little odd. Two days later, however, when Kurt's body was found, this man was long gone. The morning that Kurt's body was found, Dorothy woke up to a very strange phone call. It was actually from Susan, and Susan tells Dorothy that she had gone down into her basement and found evidence that someone had been sleeping there, um, which was odd, but Dorothy and Ken definitely wanted to check this out, um, you know, on the off chance that it could be Kurt. So they head over to the duplex and they walk down into the basement not knowing what to expect and they find a god that somebody very obviously had been sleeping in. Ken proceeds to like rip the entire basement apart looking for any evidence of Kurt and he doesn't find him, obviously. Dorothy thinks that Kurt was in that basement and had died on that cot and then he was moved. It was later that same day that those
those three boys found Kurt's body. Ken, his father, insists that he had searched that ravine several times and Kurt had not been there. So, whoever put him there had just story for tonight.